Hello and welcome to On the Money, where the business of Russia is business. I'm Peter Lavelle. Russia is open for business, but how hard is it to start up a business in this expanding market? What are the costs of entry? Do you need a local partner? And what about the state? Just how friendly are government bureaucracies? To discuss this, I'm joined by Robert May. He is a managing partner at Robert May Consulting Group. Terry Lindeberg, she is the founder and CEO of Staffwell. And Pavel Zhajin, he is the CEO of Crossbeam RT and author of the book, Successful Business in Russia, Business Conduct Manual. We also have Maxim Shirokov, he is general director of E.ON Russia, and Alexander Chuvayev, he is the executive vice president of Fortum. All right, before we continue our discussion, let's look at Russia's business environment. This is Russia, the largest country in the world with a rich cultural identity that has been shaped and molded by its distinguished history and vast geography. For all of those wishing to develop a successful business in Russia, there is a need to know why this country is a challenge even for the most savvy entrepreneur. In Russia, understanding of social and business culture is key to success. This is why international business students learn about Russian collectivism, egalitarianism, and even the Russian soul, or dusha. Russians manage relations in and out of work in a comparatively warm, open manner. Whenever it comes to negotiations, be ready to receive a warm welcome. The Russian dusha is used to giving the best to its guests. However, in terms of managing uncertainty, Russians are avoidance adverse. That is the legacy of the Soviet large-scale bureaucratic administration. So, if you are referred and transferred to other offices, keep calm and carry on. According to the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index, Russia is 112th out of 185 countries. Russia has witnessed its steady improve recently, jumping six places higher. For comparison, only two BRICS members are more business-friendly. China at 91st and South Africa at 39th. And the goal is to reach number 50 by 2015 and number 20 by 2018. Russia now attracts the interest of investors and entrepreneurs in time of global economic shifts benefiting the developing world. Daddy Chernashova on the money, RT. Okay, Terry, I mean, we saw it was very inventive there and colorful, <laughs> but let's get down to brass tacks. How many years have you been in the market? Uh, I've been here for 17 years. So you came here as a teenager, yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, we, we don't say that because you're one of the first p persons I met in Russia. Tell us how it all started for you. You have a very successful business here. Well, I came over in 96. I was living in New York City at the time, and I'd been there for five years and just needed a change, and a friend was coming oh, to Russia. change? You went to Russia in the 1990s. Okay. I did. I did. And uh, I had a friend who came over, so um, I decided to go as well and just give it a shot. Knew nothing about Russia. I um, was surprised when I got here, but um, I stuck with it, and so glad I did, because uh, I've done very well on the professional side and personal side as well. I have a lot of great friends, and I started my own business in 2000, and we have a very strong company, so on the market, recruitment firm, and uh, I... I have enjoyed every minute of it. And, okay, we'll and get some more details. Pavel, is this an <coughs> anomalous experience that Terry's had here? A lot of people come and go, a lot of people come and stay? Yeah, actually, actually yes. Uh, I, I, I started to work with foreign uh, companies about 15 years ago, I think. First, my job was with Siemens. Uh, later on, I worked with IBM, and I realized that the most part of your time you spend not talking about business, but talking about how to do business uh, in <laughs> Russia. And it was an exp interesting experience for me. And uh, I used to spend a lot of my time just uh, teaching people the culture difference. So what was so about? Well, that's very interesting. Is that a report yeah. we just heard? Okay. Robert, what about the is it the culture of business? Because this is uh, Pavel brings up a very interesting point. <clears throat> I'd say it's definitely a culture of business. If you look around the world, I mean, there's an American way of doing business, there's a Japanese way, a European way, and then there's very much a, a Russian way. And uh, it, w what you're looking at, I think, to put it into perspective, you have somewhat of a melting pot of ideas from around the world. And 
most other developed countries have already had 100 years to kind of get it all right and fine tune. If you look at Russia, they've been trying to put it together only for the last 20 years, bringing in ideas from all over. So right now there's a lot of gray area still in Russia. So to maneuver through that gray area, you need, uh, it's very much a nuanced way. You need uh, kind of the understand the culture to really make Maxime, it work. Maxime, if I can go to you, what's the nuance, most important nuance, in your opinion, in doing business in Russia? Uh, it is um, a very broad question. I'm what sorry. It, does, <laughs> okay. it yeah. is. It is indeed. <laughs> now, I just wanted to say that uh, I just came back from Krasnoyarsk, and uh, we took part in the Krasnoyarsk Forum where the Prime Minister spoke. And he did speak a lot about human capital. And I think it is one of the paramount issues for this country to invest into the capital and then harvest from it as you do business. Alexander, what's your most important nuance when it comes to business culture in Russia? I think that um, uh, doing business in Russia, you have to be persistent. You have to have ideas and you have to, have, uh, to be very persistent in uh, pursuing these ideas. And uh, of course, it takes uh, lots of time and efforts, but um, uh, I'm sure that everyone with persistency and the personal resources will be successful in Russia. That's my personal opinion. Okay, Terry, well, you know, what's, what's the most important nuance in dealing with, because you have a mature business right now. What was the biggest barrier then and now? Um, I think the biggest barrier to any business is the people that you have. You have to constantly have the right people in your company. And you have to have that confidence to know that that is going to change. And you have to always be looking for really good people to drive your business forward. And then you have to <coughs> lead them and manage them to you know, relentlessly drive that forward if you want to be successful. And I think that's anywhere. What do you think? Partners. Partners is a key to success. You can do any, nothing without partners. So only proper partners can open doors in government. Yeah, but I in, remember in the 90s you had good partners and you had kind of some bad partners. I mean, the, uh, the concept of Krisha and things like that. No, I no, mean, Krisha, it's a more criminal partners. Yeah. We're not talking well, about Well, it was that. a reality yeah, when Terry reality. and I first came here. 15 years ago, now yes. it's, it's, it's gone, uh, luckily. But now you, have, you don't have wrong partners. You should have only right partners. What's a good partner then? Give me a description. Good, good partner is a partner with a well-established business, well-established relations, uh, having some family, almost family relations with uh, executives all the way who can solve uh, all issues, uh, even not business issues with your customers. If you have a partner, you have business. If, if you don't have partner, you can make dozens of negotiations and have a zero outcome. Robert, what's a good partner in your mind? Well, I mean, definitely one you can trust, which is, right. uh, that takes a lot to, I mean, to develop to that level of trust. But here in Russia, I think if a foreigner comes and tries to do business, he's not going to be able to do it on his own. That's for certain. Because I keep saying, as I mentioned, there's the, this gray area because you have the vision of how, you know, the government and everyone would like to see Russia, and then you have the reality of how it works on the day-to-day -day level. And it's the gray area in between, and this is evolving all the time. You need a good partner, a Russian partner, or Russian partners, I should say, that actually know how to maneuver through all of these changes. So if, if you look at three things you need here, you definitely need patience because you're going to be doing things over and over and over <laughs> until you get it right. Secondly, you're going to, you need uh, the stamina or the commitment because it's, it's, this place can drain you. You really got to keep pushing at it. And um, definitely the, the, the third thing is you need flexibility because it is a moving target all the time. And until we, you know, it kind of settles down, you're going to have to maneuver and you need to be flexible and adapt. So basically anyone can be successful here, but it's going to take some work. Maxime, anyone can be uh, successful here. It just takes some work. Do you agree with that? I would, but I wanted to touch on, um, on something else, and uh, I'll try to get across the message. Partnership is very, very important. But also, I think um, you as a partner doing business here should also be reliable and transparent, mm. and specifically for us because we're in a regulated area of business and we interact a lot with the government officials on different levels, federal, regional, you have to be reliable. That's the key of the game. You have to be very vocal and very clear in terms of your goal, the strategy, and uh, your stand, if you will. And then you have to be reliable. And in this case, uh, typically people respond to you, you know, with the same attitude. Alexander, what do you look for in a, in a partner? Um, I think that uh, because uh, as um, we are in the same business uh, with um, Maxim and uh, we are regulated business, although I, <coughs> I'm a little bit more regulated that, uh, that, um, that than Eon because uh, 
we are the only um, uh, large investor involved in, in uh, communal or municipal sector, in, uh, mostly in uh, heat. And uh, I think that um, you need to be very transparent. You have to have uh, very clear ideas you, and, uh, and uh, you have to have patience. Patience, then, uh, patience. Everyone is using patience, the word patience. You have to have patience in <laughs> Russia, but also you have, uh, you have to have enough energy. Energy level is, is the key to deliver your message, to get heard, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, finally to get the results. All right, let me Especially jump in here, Especially when folks. you're dealing with We're going go to short, We're going to go to a short break, and after that short break, we'll continue our discussion on business in Russia. Stay with our team. Choose your language. Good morning for me, Kevin Owen. If you're many of San Andreas on Semanal. Choose the news that concerns you. Choose the opinions that invigorate your mind. Choose the stories that impact your life. Choose the access to your RT. We are facing a lot of problems in Nigeria because no water to drink, no good school, no development. We live inside forests. We have a lot of multinational companies in our, in our community, in Bonny oh. community. LNG Mobile is there, Shell is there. They don't give it there. If they don't return my properties, I must fight back. I must fight. I will fight. We will fight for our own right. Today, violence has once again flared up. These are the images the world has been seeing from the streets of Canada. Giant corporations rule the day. Welcome back to On the Money, where the business of Russia is business. I'm Peter Lavelle. To remind you, we're talking about how to build a successful business in Russia. Okay, Terry, I mean, you wanted to add a, a caveat about partnership, about size. Go ahead. Um, um, I think from hearing everyone that if, if you're a large size company or a medium to large size company, it's very important to have the right partnerships in Russia. However, if you're a small company coming into the market, it may not be as necessary as I think what's more important is that you have the right team in place that you're hired um, and that you just carry out your business forward. Uh, for instance, my company, Staffwell, I don't have partnerships in that you know, sense with the government and so forth. We recruit for them, we have great clients, but it's, uh, it would be very complicated if we did have partnerships in our business because it would uh, well, it may even hinder, yeah, it would hinder our business and hinder our growth and success. So, I don't think, you know, coming into this market, if you are coming in in a startup operation, 
Um, I don't think uh, it's absolutely necessary to have partnerships established ahead of time, but more have a very strong business plan and carry that through very diligently. You know, Papa, one of the things I've noticed in, from the from the 90s to the present, that in every single sector, that you know, if foreigners go in and try to capture a sector, a lot of Russians don't like that, and they want to partner with people that they can capture the sector, and then they want foreign partners. They want to do it the other way around. And I don't have time to go through all the sectors that that happened with the 1990s, but you know, is that is that uh, the way you kind of look at it and you tell people that you have to look for strong partners that are already strong in sectors? Uh, actually, yes and not. Yes for regular business like distribution of something, <coughs> definitely yes. For new businesses, I would prefer to look for a partner who has an ability to execute because they have, uh, Russia has money. Uh, Russia has a demand for technology. Huge for expertise as ex well. Huge expertise, but uh, zero ability to execute. If partner comes with a team, he ready to invest to the local team, train people, and execute the project well, it's a great uh, partner, foreign partner for Russian uh, government, for Russian companies, for Russian brokers or whatever. So ability to execute is the key uh, to, to manage the areas, to manage the sectors. Okay, mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the problems. Uh, Robert, what yeah. are some of the problems that remain, barriers to doing business here? Is there a huge cost of entry still? There's not really a huge cost of entry. Again, it depends on the business. Uh, it, depends, it really depends on the industry because, the, I mean, the, the place is really blooming in pretty much any sector you look at, and the opportunities are, are quite massive. It really depends on how uh, you want to come in and, and who you are. I mean, if you're a large corporation, it's one thing. If you're medium-sized, it's a little bit different. And if you're small, I mean, you can uh, go take your time to come in at your own pace. But the barriers... I, I'd say if you look at industries, some industries, the, the government is actually creating barriers, not intentionally, but they're really trying to push more on uh, domestic production, for example. And it's, this is healthcare. This is a, a several of the, the big industries where, uh, for better or worse, this is the approach they're taking, which, in my opinion, is not the best approach. But these, these are government-related, state-related issues, yes, right? Okay, yeah. well, that okay. happens everywhere, doesn't it? Well, I don't think to the extent that it does here. I mean, I think the rules are clearer in some of the other countries. Here, um, you have to be ready for um, changes in the, in the game because the, the, the game is changing all the time. And again, on everything, anywhere, it's about enforcement. So the rules are there. If they enforce, they enforce. If they don't, they don't. And in Russia, it's quite ad hoc in terms of what they enforce and what they don't. So if you want to look at here's the rule today on how to start a business, okay, these things are pretty clear. But there's all these little, some of the hang, hanging ons from the past, yeah. you know, some yeah. of the still the old system, some of the Soviet ideas that haven't been cleaned out yet. So it's still going through this process of uh, fine tuning what is the right model for Russia. And one thing everyone says in Russia, and the Russians are always saying it, when you come into one of these situations where something's a little strange or confusing or what is that all about, they just say, it's Russia, you know, it's <laughs> Russia. I mean, this is the answer they have for everything. It's Russia. Well, that's not a good enough answer for me. Maxime, what, what's the biggest barrier <laughs> okay. still to doing business in Russia? Yeah, I was carefully listening to what uh, Mr. May was saying. And, you know, it's incredible because it differs so vividly from business to business. For example, in our business, we're desperately waiting for change, and it's not coming. I mean the continuation of the reform of energy. But anyway, answering your question, I think that uh, logistics is, is one of the, well, I wouldn't call it a barrier, but I think it's a challenge that anyone who wants to play in this market should uh, predominantly understand. That's one thing. And uh, cultural differences as you travel from Moscow to places like Urals, Siberia, and further on to, to the Far East. Uh, this is something else to it's be like It's like sometimes going to a foreign country if you stay in Moscow, yeah. Uh, exactly. It's like, yeah, but you know, it's, it's like in the U.S. as well. So there is New York and then there is Midwest. So you have to anticipate that some of this mentality also exists in this country as well. Okay, Alexander, do you want to jump in on uh, how the biggest barrier still that you think uh, yeah, uh, I, continues to exist for starting up a business or a business I think, that's in operation? Right. I think that uh, there are two barriers, internal and external, because if you if you are a big, large enough business, you need to re uh, rely on on local people, and uh, you need to rely on the integrity uh, and compliance. Integrity is very important because uh, you need to stay in uh, integral and you need to comply with the uh, regulations and ethics and all that stuff and uh, you need to brainwash your people this is a very big uh, issue because you easily or your people can easily be distracted from from that course 
and it's very important. Another thing, uh, barrier, I well, would... Let me get, make sure I understand this. I mean, follow the rule of law. That's what you're saying, okay? Making sure uh, that you well, stay within follow, the rules. Follow the rule, uh, rule of law uh, This is uh, and regulations because it's not necessary law. Uh, and also the uh, doing uh, business in, the, in, in terms of business ethics. This right. is very important. Yeah. Uh, and the second barrier, I would say, it is uh, ability of your partners to execute. You can uh, have money, as uh, previously as was uh, said previously, you ha can have money, good intentions and all that stuff. You may rely on partners, but they have, uh, they have very poor ability to execute, and then uh, your business is going to be vanished. Okay. Terry, you, you, when, you, when you came here, you basically started a new sector. There weren't very many people like you doing it, were there? I mean, Matt, big anyway. Uh, recruitment? Yeah. Uh, no, it was quite big. I mean, after the crisis, it had yeah. it had you know constricted a bit. But <laughs> I can um, remember speaking to you a number of times when that happened. However, too, it got well. really big. Up to 2007, yeah. I think there were 500 players in the market, so it got big. It's constricted again because of the recession. And I don't think actually the market is booming right now. I think it's I think it's going to come back slowly. But I think in certain areas, things are very strong, like oil and gas and energy and uh, some well, of the other ones. What, but what banking, about regulation real of estate, your sector? I mean, is it, have they been making it up as they go along? I mean, because, you know, the whole idea of recruitment was a relatively new idea. I mean, now it's matured a bit. Yeah, but I mean, have has. you seen new regulations come on? I was like, like, oh, I didn't know about that. I mean, like, you know, find out well, one morning. Well, there has been one that's been r very difficult for us, although we've dealt with it. And I think a lot of companies in the service industry have been hit by this. But it's the, I think it's the Personal, uh, the personal Information Act. So you've had to redo your uh, IT systems. Every candidate that comes into our office has to sign a document that, um, how they are giving us approval to use their resume outside of our office. So it's a, a lot of changes that we've had to do. Is it a lot a of positive or is it just bureaucracy? Well, it's very common in the West, so it's okay. not abnormal. Okay, fair enough. However, I think the way that it's being done is just a little bit, it's, it causes a problem for, I think, everyone that's having to deal with it. But it's something that you have to do, so we're well, slowly doing it. Is it a problem still for starting up a business here, or is it helping? I mean, is the pendulum moving one way or another? Actually, there is no problem. Administrative cost is very low. You need a couple thousand bucks to, to, to set up everything and even a simplified accounting system for the first year. It's uh, very positive. Uh, the biggest uh, startup cost is uh, entering into the relation and uh, finding the partners, uh, crystallizing and lending to the Russia your business idea, because your business idea in the West will not work immediately in Russia. You have to lend it. So the cost is increasing because there is no more open space, no, no room in the market. It's book it solid already. It's yeah. not 20 years ago. So you have to, be, uh, have to find a, some differentiation for your idea and lend it properly. So that that's, that's, it takes time, it takes money. Rob, what do you think about that? <clears throat> no, I mean, I agree with what he says. The, uh, I mean, the government's not the issue because at the low levels, they're really not engaged. They're more on the, the higher well, levels. Okay, well, what, is, what can you differentiate? I mean, is it local bureaucracies versus state policy, for example? Yeah, it's because the idea is of the vision of where the com country should be. I mean, there's a lot of the, the rhetoric that says we need to make the business, I mean, the country easier to do business. We need to open the doors. Yeah, uh, but we keep hearing, I'm sorry, I've been here a long that, time. So. I keep hearing that. I know, okay? we hear that for happening? a long time. So, is it yeah, happening? It's not happening. It's not trickling down. <clears throat> That's why you still have the... Uh, the, the big gap between reality and, and the policy. But you can still function in this environment. And again, it's just a question of how do you maneuver with all this uh, movement? I mean, because it, it is pretty slippery. But um, there, there's a lot of business being done here. And I didn't mean that the country's booming in the sense that it's booming, booming. It's just the opportunities here are still quite incredible. And every day, people are starting businesses. And again, if you really push and you uh, you have the, the drive and the stamina, stamina and the patience. I mean, you can do well here. There's a lot of niche areas still. There's pretty much any area. If you want to go into tourism, you want to be in agriculture, you want to be in IT, pretty much any industry you can think of, the opportunities are here. So, uh, Maxine, so in, it's, it's still wide open, don't you think? Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I, I mean, think I, I, if I could personally say, I would like to see more competition with dry cleaning, okay? Because dry cleaning in Moscow is really outrageously expensive, and, you know, it's giving me some ideas. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm not an expert in dry cleaning, and frankly, you know, I'll have to give it some thought, probably. But, uh, you know, relating to a question, um, I think that uh, there is a lot of room. And, yes, I would agree that uh, the market is... Uh, 
a bit saturated, but not to the limit. And the, the country is vast. And as just as I said earlier, I just came back from Siberia, and and it's amazing what kind of opportunities mm -hmm. those regions offer to the people. I mean, we spend two days out there discussing various matters at the forum. And it's all about growth. I mean, you just take the Krasnoyarsky Krai. It's amazing. I mean, they got it all. You, Maxine, may, let me jump in here because I'd like to give Alexander the last word on the program. We're almost out of time here. Alexander, go ahead. What would you like to see happen? I think that uh, this market presents uh, lots of opportunities for, for the people with energy, persistency, and uh, know-how and knowledge. Okay, persistence. I think this is one of the, yeah, persistency is, is uh, one of the words because it is easy to start the business here, but it's not so easy to st sustain. And sustainability of the business uh, is, is the key. I think we have consensus on that. We've run out of time here. Many thanks today to my guests, and thanks to our viewers for watching us here on On the Money. See you next time and stay with RT.